welcome back the uh, the next thing I think we should do is at the moment we've got we basically applied a couple of filters and I'd like to have a data structure that um, maintains all of the filters something that we can manipulate and going forth so to do that let's create a new class called a filters model I think models being where we're storing data so yes filters model that sounds like a good name right what do we want this to do pretty simple actually at the moment all we really care is we want a class called filters model and we want it to have a public copy of all the filters. So I'm just going to say uh, filters, it's an array of filter. That's pretty straightforward. What am I missing? Oh, right. And I, now this is interesting, um, has no initializer. All I really need to do is give this an initial condition. By giving this an initial condition, this class can be created without creating an explicit initializer for it. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's go back to our view controller and let's change this to use our new class. So we'll go uh, variable because it's going to be mutable. Um, I'm going to call it selected filters. Our selected filters is an instance of the filters model. Right, hope that makes sense. Uh, what am I missing? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm not sure. I think. Ah, right, filters model equals filters model. Right, so this is the type, and then we're assigning uh, an instance of a filters model. Very good. Okay, now since we're doing a demo, uh, let's just, instead of doing this, we're going to use our filters model. So this first filter, the mix filter, we're going to add that to our filters model. Right? Okay, I hope that makes sense. And we're also going to do the same for this other filter. So now we have a filters model that we've added two filters to the mix filter and two instances of filters to a mix filter and a scaled intensity filter with an intensity of point. 0 to sorry 0.25 um, now a very common thing that we're going to want to do is actually take the original image and apply all the filters so let's write a function for that func func uh, what do we want to call it we want to call it uh, filter image that's good a uh, good name filter image right and what's going to return it's going to return an image and what's going to do uh, well we're going to loop through all of the filters in the filter model so I'll say for uh, filter in selected filters dot filters that looks good Right, so we're looping through each of those filters. And what we need to do is very similar to what we did here. So let's start off actually with, uh, let's just grab this code right here. We're going to start off with our image. Uh, I'm going to make this variable so it can be muted, mutated. Right, and now I am going to 
Uh, remember what we do here? We take a filter, we apply it to an image, and it gives us an image back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the image is now equal to the current filter. Okay, um, where I applied that to the previous image. Now I hope that's not too much in one step. I think you can kind of make sense of that. You know, we take the image, we apply a filter to it, and that becomes the new image. Uh, and when we're all done that, we can return image. Okay, that looks about right. Um, so now we don't need that. We can simply call filter image. filter image, that'll bring back an image, I change it to a UI image and uh, we display it. Okay, so if the moon and stars all align, then we should see something that looks exactly like it did before, but we're using our model now. So we'll just check that image. And whilst that's going, I think, okay, that looked good. I'm going to bump this back up, oh, we'll say to 0.9. Uh, I want to just make a very dramatic change just to confirm that it's actually using this, which is always a good thing to do. So now the picture should come through and brighten up quite a bit. Now she should look like a normal alien. There she goes, yes, that beautiful green tint. Okay, so that's good for this, um, and we will move on.